Hey guys! So today we are going to be talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons and before I get started I just want to say this will be a long one so if you're in it for the long haul then settle in, grab a snack and let's get going because Animal Crossing just dropped a huge direct and there's so much to talk about. So in case you guys didn't know, I am obsessed with the game Animal Crossing. I feel like ever since Animal Crossing New Leaf was released, my fangirliness and my obsession just sort of skyrocketed um, from where it used to be uh, but I've always loved Animal Crossing ever since I was like seven years old and I got my first DS and that was like one of my first DS games um, so yeah my love runs deep for Animal Crossing and when I found out that they were announcing an Animal Crossing Switch game I was ecstatic and you guys saw my reaction to when it was first announced you guys saw my reaction to the E3 trailer I cried um, I really wish that I could have filmed my reaction to the direct, but I could not, mainly because I was in work at the time and I was literally like, I was sitting at my desk, like looking at my phone, watching it, like trying not to freak out because everyone else around me was like working and I was over here at my desk looking at my phone like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um, so yeah, long story short, I was obsessed with the direct, I made a few notes and we're just going to talk about it and freak out a little bit about it. And I also haven't made a video in a long time, so this is going to be rambly as heck, so I hope you guys are ready. So the first thing I want to talk about is a big one and it was something that I was actually going to make my own like separate video about and I actually filmed one at the time but I decided not to post it because it was just me being a hot mess, um, which is me in this video but like you know, more contained. Um, but yeah, so the first thing I want to talk about is the Animal Crossing Special Edition Switch. Guys, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. It is so pretty and I pre-ordered one. Um, so yeah, the video that I filmed but never posted was basically just me having this whole dilemma of I shouldn't buy this Switch because I already own one, but this one's really pretty. But I really shouldn't be spending the money on it. But you know what, guys? I just kind of did it anyway. I was like, I really want that. It's really pretty. I'm working now full time. I have money. I'm going to do it. So, uh, yeah. I pre-ordered the new Animal Crossing Switch. Please look out for my unboxing because there definitely will be one. Um, one thing that I am concerned about, though, is that because I'm getting the new Switch, I have to wait around until it's delivered to me. And then, even when it's delivered to me, I cannot play the Animal Crossing game right away because I also have to transfer all my save data from my old Switch to my new Switch. So, yeah, I'm hoping that when I get my Switch delivered, it's early in the morning so that I can get all that admin stuff out of the way and I can just, like, jump straight into my game. But, um... I don't know if that's going to happen, so I just have to put all my hope and faith into our postal service um, so that I actually get my switch on time and we can all just like go, 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 but um, yeah, we see what happens. Like I said, there's going to be an unboxing video, so I'll probably take you on my whole stressful journey on release day. So like aside from the switch and it being amazing and everything, um, we're actually going to jump into the direct. So I'm going to talk about it in the three parts that was mentioned just because I actually was kind of organized and split my notes up that way. And yeah, we're just going to dive in. So first things first, the game is beautiful. Honestly, everything about it, the detail in the trees, the wind, the weather, the animals, it's so beautiful and the most beautiful thing of all guys I have to say is the museum. The museum got an entirely new upgrade and it looks gorgeous and everyone's talking about it online. It just looks so great. Um, every time in the previous games the museums always kind of look the same like the bug exhibit and the fish exhibit were just kind of there. Um, it's the same with the fossil exhibit I guess because they were just there and the art gallery like your museum was something that you put stuff in all the time and you maybe only went in like once or twice but you never really like spent a lot of time there but with this new museum looking so glamorous and so fabulous I want to spend all my time there like it's such just like a chill place to go and hang out <laughs> like this is so weird but like I can totally just see myself like hanging out in that museum and doing nothing else the entire day just because it's so beautiful um so yes, bravo to the graphic designers because it looks amazing and I just can't get over it. And all of the villagers doing all the cute things like sweeping the ground and like sitting down and eating and ice cream and also like exercising and like 
Oh my god, all of the new villager interactions are amazing. I'm obsessed. The next thing is when you arrive on your island, you can choose out of four different maps. This is very similar to Animal Crossing New Leaf. Um, that's going to be a struggle for me because I remember trying to choose my New Leaf town map and there wasn't that much difference between the towns, but I like, I spent a good like 10 minutes on it and I was like, I'm just going to go with the first one. So um, that might just be my decision making choice in the New Horizons game. I'm just going to look at them and probably be like, I'm just going to take the first one to save myself some stress. Um, so there was that. Um, then also um, in collecting resources this is such like a small thing but I noted it down anyway but um, whenever we were like looking at all the seasons and stuff I'm pretty sure that the character like shook a tree with lights on it and she picked up a Christmas bubble from the ground what's that about is that like seasonal like do we make like seasonal things with like bubbles we collect off trees because that's really cool um, I want to know more about that although they were very 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 specific about how things are seasonal and you'll be able to do specific activities based on the season so I wonder what kind of things that's going to be and is it going to be like significant things that we can't do like is it going to be like oh you can only craft this in summer or oh you can only craft this in winter or is it going to be like bigger things like oh you can't like swim in winter and you can't like I don't know what, what are things you can't do in summer build a snowman I don't know but like is it gonna be like um big things that are blocked due to the seasons or is it just like craft items and stuff I really want to know um because obviously you can't just be getting Christmas bubbles any time of the year so I guess that would make sense I don't know I, I felt it was like one of those really random little nitpicky things but I really needed to mention it and plus like us Animal Crossing fans are extremely meticulous when it comes to analyzing Animal Crossing news because I can't tell you how many videos I watched where it was like 100 facts about Animal Crossing New Horizons and we had like five screenshots and maybe a trailer like everyone was looking for any little scrap Nintendo would give us and then they dropped this on us and it's just like what's going on <laughs> um but yeah okay um the next thing moving on guys finally it's happening we can choose where villagers live this is so exciting everyone's been wanting this for the longest time and now we can finally do it and it's amazing i'm just gonna put it out there and say that i don't really mind villagers like moving in random spots sure it's annoying when they move into like that one specific spot you didn't want them to move into but like i'm kind of okay with that um, and I think in the beginning, especially when your island's kind of underdeveloped, it's going to be really stressful trying to decide where you want your villagers to live. Um, but not to worry because, oh my god, I'm jumping ahead, but I, but this kind of ties in. Um, but it's okay because it also looks like in the future, we will be able to move buildings that have already been built. And if that's the case, then maybe we can also move villager houses. That have already been built and that's a game changer guys moving things that already exist just like real easily like that like that that's so cool that's so new that's so everything like I don't know just having that control to be like I want you to live here instead of on my nice flowers like that's just mind-blowing it's just so crazy and I just like I feel like when I actually get the game, I won't even believe it. Like, I feel like it's something that you wait for for so long that when you finally have it, it'll just not feel real. And that's what it feels like. Everything that I've seen so far and everything that's been announced, I feel like it's been a dream. I feel like it's not even really happening. Um, but it is. And so, yeah. Uh, let's keep going. Um, the next thing that I was super hype about is 24-hour resident services. Yep, they said it in the direct, Nook is open 24 hours a day. And this is huge news, especially if you're someone like me who works 9 to 5 and can only play Animal Crossing in the evening. And you don't want to have to like play all the game you can before 9pm before Nook shuts so you can't do anything. Like it's so good to have 24 hour access to resident services to be able to buy items when you need them and not just have to like awkwardly leave stuff outside Nook's shop to sell the next day because the shop is closed. Um, so yeah, 24-hour Nook is amazing. 
I'm sure that when we get like proper shops and things they will have opening and closing hours which is fine but to have nooks open all the time in the beginning is going to be super handy and also fuel the all-nighter Animal Crossing binges that I am planning to have in the future so thank you Nook Inc. Then we also have something that we kind of saw like before the direct, like the day before Nintendo dropped like a 15 second trailer and we saw it, but custom designs on furniture. Yep, that's right, we can finally do that, that's great. Um, I don't really have much to say about that just because I've never been the biggest into designing patterns and things like that in my game. Like, it was only when New Leaf came out that I really like started to make like patterns for clothing and things like that. Um, but even then, like, I'm not, like, super into it, so, like, those customization things are great, but not particularly for me. Even when it came to designing my town flag in New Leaf, like, it looked terrible. I've never been good at designing things like that, and so, yeah, I, it's not the biggest feature that I'm super hyped about, but I'm really glad that we can do that, because I know that lots of people like that, so we love customization. Okay, <laughs> it's so funny because I just look at my notes and all I can see right there is like bees, wisp, gulliver, Rossetti, like so many things happening at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, first of all, they give us a specific warning about wasps on the island and also scorpions and tarantulas are making a return. Um, I suppose they never really highlighted this in the other games and I suppose you wouldn't really like discover it unless you were looking for it. But um, yeah, so like when you played other games and you would shake trees, Bees would come out and attack you, uh, although I suppose in this version of the game it's wasps. Um, but yeah, the challenge was that once you shook the tree and they started chasing you, you had to turn around and catch them with your net. And it's safe to say that I don't think I've ever been successful. I think there's like one time I was successful, it might have been New Leaf, where I finally caught them and I was like, oh my god, I never have to shake another tree again. Like, it was great, but um... So there's still that in the game and then there's also the tarantulas and scorpions which you can catch um, and they only appear like late at night and you would only like identify them by like wrestling or you would like see them um, and you had to sneak up on them because if they saw you they would just chase you. And then uh, we also get quick tool change which is really cool. Um, this is something so small but honestly makes such a difference in the game when you don't have to open your inventory all the time to get a tool. It's great. We love that. Um, then also we have flashes of villagers returning. So we had that little like um, wisp one which was like in the night and it looked really cool. I don't really know what wisp's purpose will be in this version of the game because in New Leaf I think he was only um, added to the game when it came to amiibo functionality. So I don't know what his plans are for this one and I think I don't really know what his purpose was in the other games either because I don't think I really experienced him in the game. Like I feel like I might have done in Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City but I really don't remember what he did. So yeah, Wisp is back. Gulliver is also back although honestly guys, Gulliver is kind of annoying. Like of all the special characters, he's the one that annoys me the most because all he does is show up at your island and all you do is like talk to him a bunch of times then he gives you an item and then goes away like it's kind of boring and in New Leaf he showed up on my beach all the time and I was just like can you just like go away? Like I don't know, Gulliver just annoys me and it's really repetitive, so it doesn't look like he does anything else in the game, to be honest, so not excited about Gulliver. What I am excited about, though, is Rossetti. Um, so with the whole thing about cloud saving and everything, we were like, okay, so what's Rossetti going to do? Well, he got himself a new gig. He got himself a promotion. He's our rescue service, so... I'm still not entirely sure what they mean but I think I kind of get it so like basically if you're lost on the island or you like trap yourself in somewhere you can call the rescue service and they'll just like pop you back in front of your house um I guess I can see a few instances as to where you would like get yourself locked out and stuff um but I it's still not entirely clear with me because it's kind of like what if you're stuck in the game like to me the way they sort of showed it and described it it was kind of like oh you're stuck like progressing further in the game which I was like 
guys it's animal crossing it's not that difficult of a game but i think what they really meant is just like if you're stuck somewhere in the island and you can't like escape from there then Rossetti will come get you and i'll all be chill um he's probably going to give you like a six page lecture on why you shouldn't like get yourself into these positions or something before he actually rescues you but he's going to do the job and it's going to be chill although i'm pretty sure because people find him scary he's probably not going to lecture you like he used to um, which is kind of sad, but at least he's like still in the game and he wasn't put it out. Okay, so then the next things I have are by decorating your house. One of the things I noticed is when they were placing the flooring on the house, it asked you what direction you wanted to put it. And that is a little tiny detail, but still something very important because the direction of your floor tile can significantly change the look of your room. And as someone who plays The Sims and who does some building and such, the direction of your floor tiles is important, so that's exciting. Um, another thing that is exciting is the new way to place furniture around your house and also being able to move multiple items at a time. I can't tell you how annoying it is when you're trying to set up a new room in your house in Animal Crossing and you have to just have your character drag each piece of furniture across the floor it's not cute and then also you know if you place something on the wall and it's not placed in the right place you gotta like put it in your inventory walk over a tiny bit and then like put it on the wall again to see if it goes to the place you want it to be super annoying so i'm really excited for this new like custom um furniture placing tool again it gives me very like sims vibes but in the animal crossing world and it's kind of cool so super excited for that though realistically what's going to happen in New Horizons is I'm going to get all the nice furniture that I want. I'm going to put it down in my house and then I'm never going to move it again because that's what happened in my New Leaf Town. So, um, yeah. Still excited for the feature. I still think it'll be cool. Um, it'll be even cooler if we're allowed to, like, help animals decorate their houses as well. It hasn't been said, but, I mean, I think it would be cool if we had a say in that because if we can decide where they live, we can sure as hell decide what's inside their houses. Um... But I haven't seen anything like that yet, so I guess we see what's going on with that. Um, the next thing is, um, I guess this is about Nook Miles. So with Nook Miles, you can buy a bunch of things. Um, literally, you can buy like so many things. It's like Nook exclusive furniture. You can buy like um, tickets to things, and you can also buy tickets to go to other islands. This kind of reminds me of the feature in New Leaf where you went to Tortimer Island. However, to get to Tortimer Island, it was free um, and you didn't have to pay Nook Miles. But considering this game uses Nook Miles like currency and plus like you have that little like airport that you go to, it makes sense that you would use like miles to go. Like in real life when you use air miles to travel, you would use Nook Miles to travel to these islands. So these islands are kind of like the New Leaf Island where you play certain mini games and you get certain items and stuff which is going to be great because I remember just going to the Tortimer Island um, in New Leaf all the time to get those rare bugs so that I can make all the bells. Um, it's definitely going to be a lot more difficult to get to the um, other special islands um, in New Horizons just because you have to earn Nook Miles first. And I kind of imagine that in the beginning it's going to be really easy to get Nook Miles because a lot of the first like challenges that you'll have for that is just going to be like, oh, catch five fish, catch five bugs, which you know you do like within the first 20 minutes of the game anyway. So um, it will be easy to get Nook Miles in the beginning, but I think it'll be harder as it goes on. And I hope that you can always earn Nook Miles to go to the other islands because I feel like it would really suck if we could only be limited to going to the other islands every so often. But I guess we see what happens. Not really sure what goes on with that, but excited nonetheless. And the final thing in the first part of the direct, oh my god guys, I'm only finishing the first section of the direct and it's already been like 20 minutes. The actual Nintendo Direct was only like half an hour, so like watch me talk for an hour and a half about everything that was in the direct. Um, but yeah, so this one's important. So they said that with the launch of the game, there's also going to be a launch um, in the Nintendo online app for your phone. And there is where you can scan QR codes from the 3DS games New Leaf and Happy Home Designer and then incorporate them into your New Horizons game. 
On top of that, the mobile app will also be used to communicate with friends in the game. And this is kind of where I have issue because it looks like the only way to like send text or chat messages to your friends is through the phone. Um, which kind of takes you out of the game a little bit because if you're here like texting something on your phone and then having to look at the game screen to see what it says, it's kind of annoying. So I wonder if there is going to be an option to like chat through the game rather than just having your phone. Um, I don't mind using your phone if you want to use the voice chat option because... Well, one, it's a lot handier than, like, having to type everything you say. But, um, also, it's, like, kind of a hands-free way to chat to your friends and still be immersed in the game. Whereas, you know, if you're, like, typing on your phone and then having to look up on the screen every few seconds to see what they say, it's not going to be ideal. Or, if it's one of those things where you can see the messages on your phone and on the screen, then you might as well be texting. Honestly, you might as well just be texting instead of playing Animal Crossing because you're just like on your phone texting them um, and not really playing the game. Like, I don't know, it takes me out of it a little bit. I feel like there needs to be some way to communicate in the game without having to use your phone, but they haven't said anything about it yet, so we see what happens. That is everything in the first half of the Direct. Um, literally, I hope I can get through the second part even quicker. And then the third part was just FAQ, which I don't really have much to say about anyway. Uh, if you're still with me, then let me know. If you stick it out to the end, bravo for you. But we're going to keep going. We're going to rally on. In the second part of the Direct, this is kind of where they try to show us some new things that they said that they've never announced before. And things like that include the appearance of proper shops in the game. So we saw like Evil Sisters, we saw Nook's Cranny, we saw the museum, um, and we also saw the resident services turn into a town hall. I say that because you're still on an island, so technically it's like the island hall. <laughs> Though I feel like, you know, as you build up your island and stuff, it will start to look more like a town and a civilization. Um, or you can kind of keep it rural and keep it like an island. Um, it's totally up to you, whatever you're feeling. Um, but yeah, so like, basically, you know, as things develop on your island, so all the shops and things around you. Super excited to see the return of most of our favorite characters. You know, the Evil Sisters, seeing Blathers. Did we see Blathers? We didn't see Blathers. Oh my god, I almost forgot, guys. We didn't see Blathers. We saw Celeste who has some kind of thing with a magic wand in the outfits. I don't really know what that's about, but because I love the clothes in Animal Crossing, I'm all for that. Uh, we saw Kix, uh, who's selling shoes, um, and we saw like a bunch of new characters. Um, speaking of which, we also saw the new special characters, which are CJ, Flick, and Dizzy May, who seem to be replacing existing characters in the game for the fishing tourney, the bug off, and also Joan, who sold the turnips. Um, I find that kind of weird that they are bringing in other characters to replace existing ones. I'm not really sure what the reasoning is behind this. I don't really have an issue with it, but I just think it's kind of weird that they would suddenly introduce new characters to replace existing ones. Like, it's different when they replace a character and they have a different job. Like, whenever they put Tortimer on that island, it was because he needed a new job because we were taking over his. Um, and then, like, with the introduction of Isabel and stuff, it's because they had, like, new purposes. So to, like, make new characters for existing jobs, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, but maybe they kind of explain what's going on with the other characters. Um... I know that in Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, they still use the existing characters and things like that. So, don't really know what's going on with that. Like I said, don't really have issue with it. I just think it's kind of weird. And I hope that they do explain why the existing characters aren't there. But yeah, um, that was just like my small thing with that. I'm still excited for all the new characters and all the new villagers. And like, seeing how the special characters actually fit into the town and where they come in. Because it kind of seems like, you know... In the beginning, it'll just be you and the two villagers and obviously, like, Tom Nook and the gang because, you know, Tom Nook always, first guy you see when you start up the game. Almost the first guy you see when you start up the game. One of the first people you see when you first start out the game and he's with you the whole way. You know, he gives you the island, he gives you, like, your house, he gives you everything you could possibly need. He is 
basically your one true provider. He is like the god of the town. Like you may think you're in control, but you're not. It's just Tom Nook's Island and we're just living in it. That's how it is. Because realistically, you wouldn't be on the island without him. And he owns all the land and you're just paying him for it. Like it, he is the ultimate landlord. Um, but yeah, anyway, point is, Tom Nook on the island, you and your villagers, and I think it's going to take a long time to gradually invite people to your island, including the special characters. I feel like over time, these special characters will visit, and you will have to somehow convince them to settle down roots on your island and actually open up their businesses there. Um, so I'm kind of interested in that. I'm also kind of interested in the timeline of progression in your island. Like, how long does it take to be able to start inviting villagers to live in your island and how long will it take for these special characters to arrive because I kind of want there to be a good timeline for that. I don't want it to all just happen within like the first week of getting the game. I want it drawn out. Like I'm not saying like years but at least like a few months between these events happening because I feel like in New Leaf after a while, like even after the first year of playing it like every single day, you know, you've kind of done everything there was to do yeah? and then like um in New Leaf, whenever you have like events happen and stuff, you would sit on your tree in your town hall um, and it would like show you like little memory things and the dates that things happened. And I feel like, you know, after the first year or so of playing your game, there was less and less of those events that appeared in your town. Um, so when you sat on the tree, like there were all the things you'd done before and then there would just be like a huge gap in date um, from the last thing to the new thing. And then like the new event would just be like, oh, someone moved in. And that's not as cool as being like, you know, you open the store and like things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that there's a good timeline and you can't just like do everything within the first couple weeks. Um, which brings me on to the final thing in part two, which was like super exciting and everyone was like freaking out over. Guys, terrain manipulation. We can put land where we want. We can build cliffs where we want. We can put in waterfalls. This is all super exciting and something we've never been able to do in Animal Crossing. And I'm just so excited. Like, I don't even think I would know where to begin with the kind of tools that those things provide. But the fact that we can do it is just amazing. And I'm so excited. And, like, it's just... I still like again this is something that like I won't even believe until I'm actually able to do it but like it's just crazy to like see how far we've come from like this little game where you kind of you could do a lot of things but you know just like actually personalizing your town and making it your own was just a little bit out of reach and now you can literally redesign your island. And I feel like, as I'm saying this, I know that for a fact there'll probably be restrictions on the things that you can do, but, like, still, just to be able to, like, have that option to even do, like, a little bit of terrain manipulation and things like that, like, that's just crazy. And I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like I'm gonna cry. Like, I can't, like, I'm, <laughs> like, literally, it's taken me, like, half an hour to, like, actually get to the point where I'm, like, I'm gonna cry. I'm too emotional. I'm too emotionally attached to this game. Guys, we've come such a long way. There's so many things that are new in this game and I'm like so excited to experience all of them. Like, I know that I've been talking about a lot of things and I feel like I missed like little things and everything, but like everything that I found out about this game so far I'm in love with. And I just like can't wait to finally have it and yeah. I'm just emotional. I'm gonna cry. Oh my god. Um I'm gonna try and hold it in because we're like so close to finishing this video and I can stop talking. Um, but yeah, um, on the note of terrain manipulation and things, there's something I forgot to talk about earlier and that is like before you're able to build stairs and like pathways up to your cliffs, you get to use ladders and I was like so excited about that because we can't even use ladders in the same jet but we can use ladders in Animal Crossing and that's so cool and I'm so excited and it looks so cute when you put the little ladder up and you climb up and you're like carrying it, oh my god that's so adorable I'm so excited and also the pole vaulting I'm gonna mention it again I was so excited about that when I first saw it still super excited about it and like it's the little things guys honestly like even just like seeing these little animations and things that the villagers can do now like it's just 
so exciting and so amazing and it actually seems like your villagers are going to be more help to you than ever on the island like we saw them doing like little things like sweeping up and like things like that and I really think that the other villagers will help you as you develop your island and I think that's going to be cool um I know that in New Leaf they kind of had it where villagers would try to help you make public works projects but um in reality what that was is them donating one or two bells every week and you would just be like guys I'm over here donating like 20,000 bells to this project where y'all um so I'm hoping that like in this game when they're more involved they actually do things and they actually will donate more than like one bell to your projects um so yeah I'm just I'm super excited about everything um okay so moving on to the FAQ section this was not really anything to me. I feel like their questions that they answered were things that we kind of already had answers to. So I think the first one and the main one that people were thinking about is that you only have one island per Switch and every character or every game profile on your Switch can have a house on the island, but that is the only island that you have. And I know that a lot of people were complaining about this, but for me, I kind of understand because if you can do all these things on your island including like manipulating the land and everything to make it however you want that is a lot of processing power that is a lot of game memory and to have eight people have eight different islands on your switch I feel like that's too much so I can totally understand that as someone who grew up with siblings and had to share things, I totally understand why people would be annoyed. But at the same time, from a practical development standpoint, I can completely understand. So there's that. I personally, right now, do not have the issue where I have to share my island with anyone. <laughs> um, and I'm really glad about that because I want my island to be how I want it to be. And I don't really need like someone else coming to play on my island and deciding that they can just do whatever they want on it. Like, yeah. So, I mean, I understand why people are frustrated with it, but as someone who is a developer, um, not a games developer, but a software developer, um, as someone who develops things and, like, understands things like that, I kind of understand why there's only one island per Switch. But in the theme of that, I'm pretty sure in previous games, it's like you could only have, like, one town per game card. So, like, you know, one game card have one town. And then even on your DS or, like, your 3DS, I think it's, like, one game one town per 3ds like because if i have an animal crossing game cartridge and i put my friends in my 3ds i'm pretty sure that i would still get my town on my 3ds if that makes any sense um but yeah what i'm saying is is like again on the 3ds i'm pretty sure you can only have one town and then in other games like you could only have one town on those as well so um yeah not mad about it don't really it doesn't really affect me as a game player so like I feel like I'm okay with it but I can completely understand if you guys are annoyed at that um also one thing I totally forgot to mention but I'm so excited about it, is the fact that they mentioned that when people come to visit your town and if you're not their best friend you cannot use certain items on their island and destroy the island this is the best news that I've ever heard in my life because I remember like you know whenever you would like make friends on Animal Crossing New Leaf and you invited people to your town and they're over here destroying it they're like running over your flowers they're like taking your expensive items they're like cutting down trees like those people were the worst and now you can like block them from doing certain things to your island and that is really important to me because I just want to make nice friends and I don't want to like have to deal with people who only come into your island to wreck it and take your things like so thank you, Nintendo. Thank you for being considerate and putting in place precaution for people who, like, might just come to your island and mess everything up, basically. That's important to me. I know that it said that you could only stop people from using certain tools on your island, so things like axes and things, but it definitely doesn't say anything about, like, properly, like, taking things on the ground from me and things like that. Um... Which I guess is fair enough because it's really hard to like block people from picking up stuff on the ground. Um, especially because it's like you don't just pick up like expensive items on the ground. You also pick up, you know, fruit and things like that. So 
I can understand why they can only restrict some features in multiplayer mode, but not all of them. But it's still such a big help to be able to like prevent people from doing things that they shouldn't be doing in your island, basically. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for that in multiplayer as well. Um, anyway... Not that I've said my piece on that because I was super excited about that. Um, the last few things that I think I saw in the um, Q&A portion of it was that there will be amiibo functionality. Um, it doesn't really say how far that goes or what it's really capable of, but basically um, you can use the amiibo cards kind of like you did in New Leaf where you can invite a villager to come to your town and maybe they will stay there. Um, to me that always seemed a little bit like cheating to get your favorite villager if you just had the card. Um, but, uh, I guess it's still going to be features, so that's cool if you like that. If you're like me and you tried to collect amiibo cards and then give up halfway, then you definitely can't do that because you probably don't have your favorite villager anyway. Um, but yeah, so they have amiibo functionality. Uh, another thing that they said, which I'm also really hype about, is free game updates. Guys, whenever I saw that thing uh, last week where they said that in the Animal Crossing game rating they added the in-app purchases thing, my heart sank. Because all I could think about is all the microtransactions that you have in Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. And I really didn't want that to come across in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And luckily for us, it's not going to be a thing. Literally, they said free updates, free seasonal updates. And I'm really excited about that because I love seasonal events in Animal Crossing. I think it's something that is really fundamental to the game and it really makes it like true to real life and also in my opinion makes most of the real world holidays more fun because you get to celebrate them in Animal Crossing and they always have like fun events and stuff and it's really cute. Um, so yeah I'm really excited about the free updates and it also hopefully means that as well as all of the existing holidays that we celebrate and enjoy there might be some new ones i'm not really sure what those will be but i am excited to see what they come up with in the future free updates are everything and i'm really excited about that um it won't be the end of the world if they do eventually decide to release paid DLC content because as someone that plays The Sims and buys all The Sims packs, I can 100% assure you that I'll buy anything that Nintendo throws my way Animal Crossing related. Like, that was literally the dilemma when it came to my Switch because it was like, I don't need this, but it is Animal Crossing, so... I'm gonna have to do it. So basically, if Nintendo releases anything Animal Crossing related, I'm all over it. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be mad if they released DLC and you had to pay for it, but I hope that, that doesn't come until like way, way down the line after they've given us as much free content as they can. Um, but it would also have to be like really good content for it to be paid because like the amount of stuff that I think they'll be able to give us for free um, is basically unlimited because I think about all the free updates that they give us for Pocket Camp and I feel like they could kind of do that the same for New Horizons. But at the same time, a lot of the exclusive furniture that you do get in Pocket Camp, you have to pay for unless you like play religiously. Um, but even then, I feel like you still got to pay for leaf tickets. Um, but yeah. Anyway, totally just rambling on about the whole like microtransaction thing. The point is we're not getting it and free updates are great. And finally, the final final thing that I'm going to say is that they did say eventually there will be a special crossover event with Pocket Camp and New Horizons. It's not exactly the mobile game integration that I think I was expecting. I felt like there should have been a little bit more of a crossover between the two, but at the same time I get that not everyone who plays the Switch game will play the mobile game and not everyone that plays the mobile game will get the Switch game. Um, but I am kind of interested to see how the crossover thing will work. Um, I'm pretty sure that for pocket camps they're going to have some kind of event that they always do where you have to like catch bugs or something to get the furniture for New Horizons. As for getting the items from Pocket Camp into New Horizons, I feel like it will be super easy. I feel like it will just be the kind of thing where you use like that Nintendo Online app or something. And like you just get a little transfer and you get the items right away. Um, I'm not really 
that fussed on the items to be honest because like when I looked at them they looked very like I wouldn't say like dull but kind of dull because they're very like in your face this is pocket camp and they're very in your face this is new horizons um and i'm not really like super excited about it but i am kind of interested to see what it'll be like at the time um and so yeah finally this is the end of the animal crossing video as i'm recording it it's 45 minutes long by the time that i edit it realistically i'll probably cut out about two to three minutes of me rambling or saying the wrong thing um so still this will be a super long video and if you made it to the end then i'm really proud of you and i'm excited for you um hopefully if you made it to the end it also means you're as excited about animal crossing as i am i feel like i just had to make a video to say all these things because i don't really have a lot of people in my life that like animal crossing like i do so i feel like i just like need to make this to like put it out in the world that i'm excited and i also feel like i've been spamming twitter a lot lately so i felt like let's just make one video let's just get it all out there um and so yeah that's where i'm at guys super hyped about animal crossing cannot wait for the game to be released i can't believe we still have like a month to wait for the thing um but we're closer than we ever were and it's just kind of crazy i'm so excited uh and yeah uh also Hopefully look forward to Animal Crossing New Horizons videos whenever the game launches if I can turn myself away long enough from the game to actually edit videos that I film. Um, not really sure what I want to film when I do. Um, I mean I suppose it'll just be like a let's play but I don't want it to be boring because um, like when I play Animal Crossing I'm a very like habitual player and then I always like get a little routine when I start playing the game and I continue with it like I do have like an Animal Crossing 3DS routine that I do when I play the game so I feel like it'll be very that in New Horizons like once I find my groove with it it'll be the same thing quite often so I don't want to like just have a bunch of gameplay videos that are all the same thing but um I guess we'll just see what happens I feel like there'll be a lot of videos in the beginning because I'll be freaking out about every new thing but um, yeah, I don't know. I just know that I love Animal Crossing and I want to make videos about it and I want to share it with the world. So, be prepared. Uh, anyway, time for me to stop rambling. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And let me know in the comments below what feature you're super excited about in New Horizons. Honestly, I'm super excited about everything, so I couldn't even choose a favorite one. Um... But if you have a favorite one, then let me know down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.